Rectate your phone. Hmm. So it tells me here. It says rectate your phone. Did you press line? Yep. Nope, you're wrong again. It's the wrong way again. You're sideways again. Sideways again. Hmm. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Can you just get me back? That was okay. because you were... This is it. Love me. Okay. It's sideways. We might just have to do it the other way. Now, yeah, what's it showing? Is it showing it the right way now? It's because it's a, it's a delay. Let me see. Okay. Yep, now it's right. All right, so somebody just has to hold my phone because we can't let it delay anymore. Well, can it put it in here still? I don't know. It'll still fit. Well, at least get started. Help me. All right, everybody. I'm so sorry we're having technical problems with the internet, uh, but I think we're about ready to go. And uh, I, I think I'm right side up now, and I think I'm on. Uh, but I'm very sorry for all of the problems. But um, welcome to our liturgy, and uh, to, to, tonight we celebrate the, um, the third week of, uh, of Easter, and um, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and with your spirit. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O Lord, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have our reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, and you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, 
because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says to him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the Nebuchadnezzar, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the neverworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God. He received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured him forth, as you see and hear, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to you, Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who holds fast my lot. Lord, Lord you, you will show, show us the path, path of life. life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Lord, Lord you will you show, show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the never world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, Lord you, you will show, show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, Lord you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are invoked as Father Him, who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you are ransomed from your fertile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ as a spotless, un unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he said to them, What sort of things? 
And they said to him, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described. But him they did not see. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, I guess, like everybody, um, I've been wearing a mask the past week or so, every time I go out. And um, I've tried different things for the masks. Uh, you know, I don't sew at all. And uh, so I saw this one where you can make a mask out of a sock without having to sew, you cut it on the one side, and you cut loops and all of that. If you haven't tried that, I'll save you some time. It doesn't work, <laughs> especially not when all of your socks are black crew socks like mine, um, because what happens with that is you get black fuzzies all around your mouth and nose. So that doesn't work at all. And then my sister made me a mask, and, and one of our parishioners made me a, a homemade mask, and it fits really well. And my sister-in-law, Melita, she told me that if you put a coffee filter inside your mask, it's 80% more effective. So now that I had my new mask and I put my Mr. Coffee filter in there, I decided to go to the supermarket the other day. And I had my uh, baggy gloves and I had my mask on and my coffee filter and I went into that store because I was ready. For the first time in my life, I am about to say these words. When I was in the supermarket, I had mask envy. Because I was walking around with my homemade mask and my Mr. Coffee filter, and I was watching everybody else go by. And some had these like really neat looking ones with the neoprene, and somebody else had one with like a breathing button right in the front. And I was like, wow, look at that mask. That's a great looking mask. And, and then I went by somebody else and they had an official N95 mask. And I'm thinking, wow, 
Where did you get one of them? You know, they must be really know somebody to have one of those masks. And I found myself actually jealous of other people's face masks. Here's the problem. I was in the store in my own neighborhood. I couldn't tell you one person that I was in that store with. I probably passed by any number of people from the parish. For all I know, I could have passed a good friend. But you know what? I didn't see anything in anybody because I was only looking at masks. In today's readings, especially today's gospel, we see two people who are walking along and Jesus walks along with them on their way to Emmaus. And they don't recognize Jesus. Why? Because they weren't looking for him. They weren't looking to see him. It even says there, when Jesus walks up to them, they stopped and they looked downcast. They didn't look at Jesus. Just like I wasn't really looking at the people I was with, I was looking at other things. And they were too. Now here's the thing about these two people, uh, Clo Cleopas and, and the other one. They were on their way to this town of Emmaus. And depending on which gospel you read, Jesus told the apostles before his crucifixion, he said, three days later I'm going to rise again, even though they didn't understand what that meant. And depending on the gospel, one gospel says, remain and wait for me in Jerusalem. And the other one says, go to Galilee and, and wait for me in Galilee. Well, Galilee is, is straight, almost straight north of Jerusalem. Um, of course, Jerusalem is right there. The town of Emmaus, most people think, was either south or southwest of Jerusalem. So when these two people are walking along, they're going the wrong way. They're not going the way the Lord told them to do. And they knew about the resurrection because they, they, they were even told Jesus on their way to Emmaus. And they didn't recognize him because they weren't looking for him. But what they didn't realize is that even though they were going the wrong way, Jesus was with them. And he walked with them in the wrong direction all day long until they got to Emmaus. Finally, when they did recognize him in the breaking of the bread, which we as Catholics do every time we come to Mass, we recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Whatever it was that made them run away, whatever made them fearful, whatever didn't give them the courage to stay and do what Jesus asked, was gone. It was gone because they finally saw Jesus and they realized that he was with them. You know, the same is true for you and for me right now. There are lots of things that can make us fearful. You know, the, the coronavirus is only part of it. There are lots of things that can make us fearful. There are lots of things that can make us frustrated. There are so many things that can make us just want to get out of town and go, go somewhere, do something, get away from it all. I wonder if, like me in the supermarket, or our two apostles, I wonder if we're not looking the way we could and should. I wonder if we can forget, because we're looking at, at, at other things, that Jesus is with us too. Jesus is with our Lord. And even if it is taking longer than we think it should or that we want it to, we can't forget that our Lord is with us and that nothing can overcome us. Not fear, not frustration, not lack of patience. None of these things can overcome us if we put our trust in his power and in his life and in the grace of his resurrection. Maybe this week, even with those who are around us, even with the people that maybe we feel like we're spending too much time with, we can look for Jesus, look for his presence in our life, and when we see him and find him, we can rejoice because our Lord is with us. And now let us stand and profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present our petitions for ourselves and for people in the world today. We pray for the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters who suffer and especially those suffering in this pandemic, that their sorrow may be turned into gladness, which no one can take from them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died, and especially we pray for their families and friends who may be mourning in a, in a particularly bitter way because they were unable to be with them in their suffering that those who have died may receive the gift of eternal life and their loved ones may have the condolence and the, uh, the confidence that faith brings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God you. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial lamb who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. is the most difficult part for, for us Catholics to not be together because we're unable to receive our Lord in the Eucharist and I certainly hope that our fasting from the Eucharist uh, will come to an end soon but we can make a spiritual communion where we unite together our desire to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament knowing that we recognize that it is Jesus in the breaking of the bread, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And we tell our Lord that we know that, we wish to receive him, and he wishes to be with us. And we believe that in a special way, in a spiritual way, we receive the presence of Christ in spiritual communion. So let's, let's unite our intentions and our hearts to that of our Lord. disciples recognize the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. Alleluia. And let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the and the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I'm sorry for all of our technical difficulties, but I'm so glad for your patience in uh, bearing with us, and, and I'm so glad that you were able to join. Um, hopefully it won't be so many more weeks, but uh, it looks like I'll see you again next week. Thank you, Father.